Hello friends, my name is Dane Miller, and I am Niall Spain, and we are, and always have been, your fuck buddies. We are a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky sexy situations and we turn them into sexy sticky situations. Simply put, we find queries on the topics of sex and dating, either online or from our wonderful listeners. We answer them for you. And today, Niall has put before me a impossible task. Yeah, I kind of threw Dane under the alcoholic bus today by uh, by some. You might have seen this post saying that for every react we got, he was going to have a white claw. That got out of hand a little but, bit. But oh yeah, son, gripping and rip it. Is that three or four now? This is number three, I believe. Did you say I believe? Uh, well, I did just pour it. Like just straight <laughs> on my crotch. So, oh man, this, uh, yeah, I love it. Hey, there's no laws, so you can pour it on your crotch all you want. That's how I drink now. Perfect. It's like butt chugging, but through my urethra. Mm-hmm. I made a mess. Jesus. Okay. Well, this is a good start. In other news, you're a fully vaccinated boy. I am fully vaccinated. I have the power of Pfizer flowing through my veins. I got really lucky. I passed by a pharmacy as they like had their last two shots and they were just like, you want it? And I was like, hell yeah. So yeah, this is great. I and love greedily, it. he took both shots. I took both. Yeah. Each arm is now immune <laughs> to Corona instead of just one. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm scheduled for uh, when this comes out tomorrow. Hell um, yeah. The Tuesday, the Tuesday. Which uh, means the reality of me and you both being in the same room at some point is possible. It's narrowing. I mean, like, if we wanted to be super safe and playing by the rules, like, two weeks time. So mm-hmm. by, like, July, we will we could be in this room together, this closet together, sweating it up, being boy power. Now, do we want to do that? As in wait or as in ever see each other again? As in, like, get in a small sweaty closet. Because, like, I would love to know, and I probably should because I was there for both. But, like, is there an energy change when, like, we're separate? Is it the same? Is it better? I don't you know? I see I don't want to say anything because I don't want to put any expectations on when we finally do start recording together mm-hmm. in person. I yeah. just want to let's just see what happens. You know okay. what I mean? Like I, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to um I will also say I keep manifesting. I keep saying I'm manifesting shit ironically and uh it's all come true. Well, I kept joking about getting my vaccine on the way home from work the day we became eligible and hey, worked out. I literally said, I told uh, my girlfriend, I was like, well, first things first, I kept being like, we're going to get vaccinated when when they finally opened up to our age bracket. I was like, we're going to get vaccinated uh, in like two days. And she's like, that's not going to happen. We're going to have to wait like a couple months before we get our first dose. And sure enough, a couple days later, we were there was a pop up and we got went and got vaccinated. And then I was like, by June 22nd, we're going to get vaccinated. What's our appointment for our second dose? June 22nd. June 22nd. Isn't that fucked? Can you like manifest that we make some money off the podcast? <laughs> sure. I <laughs> mean, like, like I, I don't know. It's it's such a coincidence, but also like I don't believe in like the whole manifesting thing. But so far, everything I've quote unquote manifested as a joke has happened. That's Almost. gonna be Dane's advice for the entire podcast. You could probably just stop listening now. Yep. Crack a white claw and manifest your problems away. <laughs> oh God, you've become so basic in the last year and a half, Dane. Are you ready for some sex news? <laughs> Are you sure. Uh, did I or did I not scour the city to find a cum tree for us? Because I did. And if anyone in Toronto wants to know what their cum should smell like, go to Shaw and Harvard, and there's a tree that smells like semen right there. I've never encountered this tree. Is it like, do I have to pull a leaf off the tree? No, or is- no. You just like, as you cycle past it on the street, you get a big whack of semen in your face. <laughs> that can be our first date. When we go back out, we can go to a semen tree and drink some white claws. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, now hot we're doing boy, it. Hot boy summer. Hot boy summer. Um, and did you hear about the Batman Cunnilingus controversy or the BCC? I did. I did you hear did. about this. Okay, yes. damn. I was hoping I could like sideswipe you with that one. 
No, I know, I know about it. I still don't quite understand it and what the position truly is, but I did hear about the fact that I think it's like in the Harley Quinn sort of like adult animated series. Mm-hmm. Um, Batman has been forbidden to go down on Catwoman because mm-hmm. heroes don't do that. Yeah. What the fuck quote is that? Heroes don't do that. What does that mean? What does that mean, DC? Like, also, DC, I like we've given shit to a lot of people for giving out bad sex advice. Didn't ever think we'd have to have you on the firing line. But goddamn, you're not good at this. I mean, if we want to peel back the curtain, he is a privileged white male billionaire. So the fact that maybe it's just canon that Bruce Wayne doesn't go down. Yeah, maybe he just is really bad and bad. And like, look, no one should be forced to do any act that they don't want to do. But on the other side, saying heroes don't go down on people is such a wildly incorrect statement because it's basically saying, oh, have you gone down on someone? You're not a hero. Yeah. Like, what? Hey, DC, think about the troops. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Keep going here. What what do you say? I'm just saying, if any soldier has ever gone down on their partner or anyone, that they're not... A hero. Therefore, vis-a-vis, DC is saying that our men and women in the military are not heroes. Now, here we have the uh, highest honor we can bestow upon someone for their incredible actions leading to saving the lives of dozens and dozens of women and children and kittens and puppies. And oh, just just before we pin it on, sorry, uh, have you ever... You ever gone down? You touch that puss with your tongue? Well, yeah, I get out, you villain. All right, clap him in irons. Heroes don't do that. That literally sounds like something that Marjorie Taylor, whatever the fuck her name is, would say. Yeah, it it, it sounds like a joke, like a, a fucking onion article or something. Guys, uh, DC, what are you doing? Go down on people. And it is actually heroic. I got to say, I've made a real mess with this. <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> how it's this oh man are you ready for a question (laughs) i don't know if i'm ready for anything yet uh well i'm giving you one this is by boy down the block right after sex my girlfriend looks at me and says i miss my vibrator it caught me off guard we just had sex and i got her off three times before i let mine go when we do have sex it's great and we've communicated things we like and worked through it all up until this point this time though right after she finished she looked at me and said I miss my vibrator. I don't know what to do. I just left the room. Not even 100% sure why it bothered me so much, but seemed kind of out of pocket to say something like that right there and then. Any thoughts? That's... (laughs) I mean, I think if anyone said that to me, I'd be like, what? (laughs) It's it's quite casually cruel. I, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, maybe she was, maybe that was a setup for a joke and you just walked out and she never got to, like, finish it. You know what I mean? Like, it could have been one of those, like, I miss my vibrator. It's like, oh, why? And then she had, like, a zinger to be like, I don't know. I don't know what the punchline could have been. Maybe she bought him, like, a nice meal, like, an hour or two beforehand, which was costly. And she was going to be like, because it only eats batteries. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, something. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. If you're setting up a joke and someone seems upset or leaves the room immediately after sex, and that's not sort of like their go-to move, I would maybe run after and be like, hey, just so you know, like, it was I was joking. There was a joke to this. I'm sorry. I, I don't actually, you know, I'm not forlorn or like, you know, longing and pining for my vibrator as an re- alternative to sex with you. Yeah, like, I'm definitely the kind of person that has made jokes which have not landed properly or I haven't thought about or, like, said a thing that, like, the second you say it, you're like, damn, I realize it could be taken this way. Uh, My mouth sometimes just goes when my brain is like, "I, I haven't arrived at the scene yet. You shouldn't run off without me. So these things can happen. But at the same time, you should also be super aware of, like, when people are vulnerable, i.e., naked and post-coital try not to try not to say things like this and there's no point where he says oh yeah and then later on she was like it was a joke lols but like people are fucking weird as we've known throughout this entire podcast we're like he probably didn't bring it up and she was probably like oh no i fucked up i'm not gonna bring it up 
Yeah. Like, Best you thing know to I mean? do is pretend that never happened. Exactly. Like I can imagine her side of the the defense of her question being like, I made a stupid comment and now, you know, my boyfriend just left after sex. Should I like bring it up again? You know what I mean? Like yeah. so 250 I, fucking comments being like, no, never. Yeah. So like I get it. I, I mean if if you want like let's okay, let's play in the space in which we've or you know, the parameters in which we've been given. I think there's no harm in you being like, hey, so the other day when we had sex, you mentioned that you missed your vibrator. What did you mean by that? Because I feel kind of shitty about it. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, you know, she has a, a logical explanation for it. Um, if she is just being like, it fucks me better than you, then maybe you need to address and be like, hey, if if you're not satisfied, let's talk about that. But insulting me immediately after sex is not the productive way to do that. Yeah, like the productive way to do that is like, hey, can you try this? I prefer that. Or like, oh, harder, softer. How about here? You know, any of those things, right? Yeah. But Dane, what about the context? Okay. Like, what happened to the vibrator? This is true. Right? Like, what do you mean you miss it? Where'd it go? What happened? Did you did you take it? Did he take it and throw it away? Did she lose it? Did it get confiscated? Did it, like, get submerged and squirt and stop working? I, I don't know. Submerged and Squirt is probably like <laughs> my favorite Green Day album. Yeah, it was. Uh, they're weirdly like the sexual like ninety eight album. God, this chair is so wet. <laughs> we're, we're coming in hot and heavy with some. How much did you spill? Uh, I mean, I didn't think it was that much, but every time I look down, there seems to be more of it. Dane's just constantly peeing, which is fine because there's no laws. There, there's a good chance I'm submerged in squirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you got to talk. You got to get to the bottom of this and like let her know that her saying that made you feel like shit and that it sounded like she was, you know, denigrating your sexual performance. And if she's not cool about it, then get the fuck out of there. If she is cool about it, you know, hopefully you guys can communicate and move on either in a like, you know, go on a quest to find her missing vibrator or just, I don't know, get better at sex with each other, you know, by again, communicating. Yeah. Can we also, let's, let's get this on the table. Stop running away from your problems. You know what I mean? Like if, if something has upset you, talk to your partner about it. It doesn't make any sense to be like, Oh, my partner said something that upset me. I'm going to go to the internet first. Like mm-hmm. if you're if your first course of action isn't to approach your partner. Wait, 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 wait. We need people to go to the internet so we have a podcast. This is very true. You shut the, the thing hell up. Is, <laughs> there's always gonna be people who would rather get validation from strangers than actually confront their partner about real issues. Yeah. No, but like for real, if you need a second to like decompress or get your mind straight, by all means leave the room, take a breath, walk around the block, but then go back in and just like don't let it breathe, don't let it fester because the longer you leave it, the harder it is to bring up again. And like, also, the more time they have to make excuses and shit, like if if they don't want to be genuine and nice or if they want to cover their ass, if you actually talk in the moment, maybe you'll actually get more honesty and you'll be able to like breathe because you're taking this weight off your chest and getting it out there. And for better or worse, you're going to move forward. And it's more likely that you'll actually do it because the like the big thing, and I think this is true for almost everyone, is like the more you put off a harder a hard conversation, the mm-hmm. harder it is to actually have it. Oh, 100 percent. We always look back at like things, and be like, ah, I should have said that. Mm, should have said that. And it's like, and then you kind of like start, you know, biding your time and waiting for the right opportunity to bring it up. And then there's never really the right opportunity to bring it up. And then like if you wait like a week, then it's weird to just be like, hey, remember this. Yeah, and then you start to tell yourself like, excuses like, oh, it's too late now, or like, oh, I guess I got over it, like, oh, be weird of me, you know, and that's you giving yourself permission to not deal with it, but you're not over it. Yeah. And also, try to be careful with the things you say when people are, you know, vulnerable. Pre, or, or sorry, I mean, I guess like any duration in like pre, during, or after sex, we're all very, very vulnerable. We're all very self-conscious and hyper aware of sort of like, everything that's jiggling and working and you know whatever's happening with their body so our insecurities are sort of like at peak at that point unless you've reached like that level of comfort with your partner and hopefully at that the reason you've reached that level is because they haven't said like things like this in the past dropping this kind of these kind of like jabs or barbs or jokes even if they are just jokes 
Um, mm. the the chances of people overanalyzing it is so high. And if it's true, like if if you mean this uh, as the girlfriend, if she's actually trying to be like, yeah, you suck at sex. One, that's shit. You're being an asshole. Two, there's a better way to go about it, which is, you know, asking for what you want and, you know, being open and honest. And three, it's like you can also include the vibrator in the bedroom if you want to. And four, Mm -hmm. he says, I got her off three times before I let mine go, which like may again, communication. If you're faking orgasms or he doesn't actually know when you're coming and all this shit, it's like. It just seems like you guys are living in two different worlds, if that's the case. And that is a uh, takes two to tango situation. And the way out is not to turn around and be an asshole. Can we also just talk about the phrase, let mine go? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even like register it when I read it initially. But when I read it out loud, I was like shuddering a little bit. And also, I think we should adopt it from now till the end of time. I mean, that's the thing. Is like I'm simultaneously disgusted by and giddy. enamored. Yeah, mm-hmm. enamored, but you know what I mean? I just, I love oh, it. Hey, what? oh, fuck. Oh, I'm about to let mine go. <laughs> I'm gonna let it rip. It's like you're about to play fucking Beyblades. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that idea that, I, you know, sex is just a real, real graphic Beyblade match. On top of the fact that's just the weirdest phrasing, it, it suggests ultimate control. It, oh, and also, like, just ultimate punishment at the, like... <laughs> You know, letting something go is sort of like, you know, you've let the floodgates open and it is a is a torrent. I saw a video of a man like threatening a police officer who was holding a police dog and the dog was like raring to go and he was backing off and, you know, holding up the dog and eventually things escalated and he let go. And that's all I can imagine in my mind. I was really a German the- shepherd just going to town. <laughs> Yeah, I was really worried that a story was going to end with someone ejaculating on. <laughs> yeah, which one would be that. the worst? Yeah, it's like, I don't know like who ejaculating on who in that situation would be worse, but mm-hmm. I feel like none of it would be great. I think the dog ejaculating on someone would probably be the best, because there wouldn't be a malice <laughs> behind it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the dog doesn't mean anything bad by it. You know, you know? You it would be it would be a comedy like circumstance instead of a sexual assault. I guess <laughs> we need to move on to the next question. Yeah, this comes from Reddit user. Oh, we've also received three more reacts during that question. So I don't even have up, that many white three more white claws. I don't have that many white claws. Um, this I comes probably from, should have told Dane that I was doing this before I did it. Uh, this comes from Reddit user Dio's tits. Dio's tits. Tios, 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 nah. Tios, Squiddies, Titties, Squiddies, Titties. Uh, my vagina pushes him out during orgasm. Me and my boyfriend started having sex about two months ago. The first time he got pushed out when I orgasmed. He has found out that his weight alone isn't going to keep him in. He has started to hold himself in, but he struggles and he has to fight to stay in me. The orgasms are much more intense when he's in me, though. Is there any way to make my vagina hold him in instead of trying to push him out? I'm I'm a sex and dating advice podcaster. I'm not a magician. Now, I brought this and like, I understand that we can't really give advice to the lady because we don't have a vagina in which we can sort of give tips and tricks onto you know, Kegels or, or whatever that might actually help you in this situation. Well, it seems like she doesn't need to. She needs to anti Kegels. It's already too powerful. I want to bring to light. And the reason I brought this in is because like I've been with partners who have done this. Um, and like even it hasn't even been a sort of an orgasm situation, just particularly like, you know, if something feels very good or we're in a specific position, sometimes, you know, like the vaginal walls expand or contract or, you know, move and will push you out or at least like alter it, your yeah, your difficult. position. What I want to stress here is don't try like whatever your body is naturally doing. Don't try to alter. That. And that is to go for both uh, the man and the woman in the situation. Um, one, trying to stay in while being physically pushed out is a really good way to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, that goes for both sides of things because your body is doing whatever it's doing. Um, and it usually is a, a combination of muscle contractions, blood swelling, you know, the things that our body does when we orgasm and, and when we're, you know, aroused. So there are things to do 
aside from keeping your penis in there, which could get pushed out. And if you're trying to continue to thrust while it's happening, there's a good re- like you don't want to hurt that dick. Exactly. Or her, because like mm-hmm. the, the resistance you're meeting is her body. Yeah. So trying to force your way in through there is a good way to cause some damage to either one of you. Now, I don't know, like, I have some suggestions. Do you have anything? I have had this happen rarely, and I think a lot of it is, like, if your dick is on the shallower end when the kind of, you know, momentous clench happens. Um, We're coming up with a lot of really good band names today. (laughs) Um, So maybe it could be a kind of a communication thing where it's, like, if you're like fucking them and again if it's if it's purely penetrative you probably don't want them to stop when the orgasm is coming but like if it's penetrative and you know working that clit if she knows it's coming maybe she could like warn him to stay fully in uh you know stop the thrusting and then just like keep fucking like you know playing with the clit Mm -hmm. and at that point because you're further in there's like a lot less to force out and he might stay in if that's what she needs or maybe replace it with a finger. Again, you don't want to hurt the woman, but it's like a finger is a lot more rigid and workable. And it's like, if you're wet enough and whatnot, maybe that could serve as a good kind of like replacement. That Yes, that that was going to be my suggestion is replacing, like if it's, if, he, if you get pushed out uh, via, you know, body just doing its thing, mm-hmm. a finger is far more dexterous. It has way more points of, you know, articulation, you can mm-hmm. bend them, you can sort of move them around any sort of obstruction. Like also, said, a literal bone. You still don't want to cause any damage to her. Um, but you, with your fingers, you can still like provide pleasure with proper fingering technique. And this might take some work, some practice, some communication. Um, but I think it is a far safer alternative than just trying to jam your dick into a place that is obviously not big enough anymore for you, Mm -hmm. at least temporarily. Like there's no harm in, you know, fingering her to assist or uh, enhance her orgasm. And then once she's calmed down a bit, Mm re-entering, that's, that is a completely cool thing to do. A completely fine thing to do. Um, if everyone's on board, of course. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. talk to your partner and and suggest these alternatives. Suggest trying them out. If they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. Um, and unfortunately, it's like if ejection is going to happen, even though it might feel better to keep him inside, mm-hmm. an orgasm's an orgasm's an orgasm. I really yeah. don't think that it's going to ruin your orgasm. And if it does, then you guys really need to figure out something. Mm-hmm. Perhaps have a toy nearby that won't do any damage to either one of you. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to work together in this and realize that like the body's going to do what the body's going to do. And you need to uh, like, first and foremost, and like one of the most important things about sex is like listening to those physical cues. Yeah. And again, like I think the most chance you have of not coming out is if you're in as far as you can go, mm-hmm. but like to do that, like there's, there's no magic to be able to like get that just at that point. So you'd probably have to make sure you're in as far as you can go as you approach orgasm. And if you're getting it from the thrusting, then that's not going to work. But if it's, again, like a medley of other shit, then, yeah, if you can be like cognizant of that time and like communicate and be like, okay, so you depress yourself up, like stop thrusting, keep rubbing. And then just like you want to come around his dick. Hell yeah, go for it. You know, again, if that still forces him out or hurts him, you got to find another way to do it. Also, you can experiment with positions because I found like nine times out of 10, the times I've experienced this has been in doggy style. And usually when... Is that with their legs close together? It's usually when they're standing. So yeah, which which would be close enough, I assume. Yeah, I mean, like it depends on on the woman. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes it would be like a wide stance. Sometimes it'd be depending on like how tall they were. Yeah. And and the, the bed we were, or, you know, the surface we were having sex on. So like there are options if... If it is sort of like a bent over bed situation, try lifting one leg and that will Mm -hmm. give you a bit more clearance to shift your body either to the left or the right to, you know, hopefully try to get in. I know some people kind of are like, I only orgasm through penetrative sex in like this or or this position and and like this sort of like stroke. And that's fine. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Even then, like most positions have a variety of ways to do that position, like that might not necessarily change it. I know like for me, the most times I've felt like resistance is when like the legs are like fully together because 
that kind of simulates like extra tightness or whatever. Yeah. Play around with that. But, you know, there are ways to work around this, you know, the big C word communicate. Make sure one don't make them feel bad for when this happens. Like it's going to happen. If it happens, it happens. Don't be like, oh, I need you inside me. Like that sucks. And and especially yeah. if it's like a physical impossibility for him, uh, especially if it's like your body doing the ejecting, you know what I mean? Like, so don't, don't try to guilt anyone. Don't get hung up on it either. Roll with the punches. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You'll be fine. Work through it. Communicate, be a partner. You know what I mean? Like be, be a team. This is a team sport. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like you don't want to be shitty and as dane said like an orgasm is an orgasm you know what i mean like yeah it could be better but like if it transcends the realm of like physicality and possibility with your partner a slightly less good orgasm is good enough i mean that's the thing it's like if i ever orgasm through a blowjob i often have to be like okay no more like <laughs> stop touching me because mm-hmm. i physically can't you know oh, yeah there's, the amount there's of a sensation. point after you're like when you're coming there's like a very brief window where more feels good and you definitely don't want to lose that but then it very quickly switches to oh more is awful stop i'm sure if i could power through it the sensation would be incredible but like i don't want to power you know what i mean like uh, hey I, I honestly don't think that's true maybe but it's it's sort of the same thing of being like you know i have to physically be like okay this is this is as good as it's going to get because this is as good as my body's going to let it get <laughs> <laughs> so I think you have enough here to hopefully move forward with this mm-hmm. and and work together as a team to figure out a solution. And and I wish you the best because it sounds like you guys are doing a great job. Are right, you ready for this? Yep. This is kind of weird, uh, but it was you know front page of Reddit, twenty five thousand upvotes, every fucking award in the book. Uh, this is on Ask Man, and you know what? Given the month in question, let's do it. As a straight man, how do you feel when a gay guy compliments you in a non sexual way? As a gay man, I love throwing compliments at men. Straight or gay, I love boosting their confidence and letting them know how attractive they are. Again, in a non-sexual way. I was at Starbucks one time and I complimented this dude's coat and asked him where he got it from. He seemed pretty weirded out by it and his girlfriend, I think, looked up at him with a what the fuck type of smirk as if I asked to suck his dick and that really annoyed me. Is that weird to give other men compliments? I don't come off as too gay either, which I don't think should make a difference. I'm not really looking to get anything out. Out it out of it, I guess, with maybe an yeah. exception or two. Hey, I'm human. But yeah, what are your thoughts? And I the reason why I said it was strange is just because the comments are all over the place. So this is something that I tread the line of as well, like where I think I don't really do it to strangers. But when I'm at work and like regardless of, of gender, but like, you know, if someone comes in looking great, I try to tell them because like I would love that. Personally, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like if, if someone was to be like, damn, you're looking great. Or I love that shirt on you or whatever. You know what I mean? Like your beard looks incredible today. Any of those compliments like can make or break people's day. You have no idea what they've been dealing with prior to the time you've met them. And for all you know, like they really need it. So mm-hmm. as long as, again, like complimenting someone's coat and asking where you got them, so harmless absolutely nothing wrong with that if you're you know if you're like hey your tits look great today or Mm -hmm. hey your butt looks great in those pants today depending on your relationship with the person that might be okay but with strangers or you know co-workers whatever there's a line and i think it's pretty obvious where that line is drawn (laughs) well it should be (laughs) at least yeah it hopefully should be like there are friends that i work with who i would be like hey ass looks great today and i know they would take that as me not hitting on them like but as as intended yeah exactly um and then there are also people who i work with who i would never say that to because i know they would probably be really upset by it mm-hmm. and that's just like you know getting to know people but i think like one of my favorite things to do when back when we could go out and see random people were to pay people compliments mm-hmm. so it's unfortunate that i mean like this is just straight up homophobia that's yeah that was kind of like the reason why i like felt weird about bringing it up is because like you shouldn't even need to and it's funny because he edits and says i guess i didn't need to say when a gay guy compliments you it's irrelevant like blah 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 it's like yeah fuck it like if a gay person compliments you and you feel upset especially when it's in a non-sexual way then you're probably just a homophobe this might be homophobic in it of itself but like if a gay dude compliments me. I like that means more to me. Oh, like hell I, yeah! I don't know. Like I'm, I'm I really sorry. Like I think it's just 
Like, <laughs> you, there's like a, I don't know. Like, I, yeah, I don't know if that's a problematic thing to say. And I feel like there is something in there that probably is. But like, if a if a stranger, I, I mean, like, it's hard to be like, oh, I know you're gay. But, you know, sometimes it's obvious. If, if someone came up to me and was like, damn, you know, you look good. Or I love that shirt. Or your style's on point. Or whatever. It's like, that would make my week as opposed to my day. <laughs> For me, and it's it, like, if it comes from someone who themselves is stylish or like, has their shit together and they said it to me i would trust their opinion more and often gay people have crazy good style you know what i mean yeah so again maybe that's that's a generalization but it's a good one i guess and yeah like a- again i love it if someone says something nice to me and the, again another thing about why i was weird about bringing this is like i don't want this to be then translated into like hey guys go compliment women in a weird way and expect them to be chill about it like oh it's a fucking compliment because it's very different in terms of one non-sexual way. If someone's like, "Hey, I love that shirt," and you're talking to someone and you're not being weird, and you're like, "Oh, I love that shirt," that's probably going to go okay. Whereas, yeah. like most catcalling and like weird comments that women get are not like that at all. So, yeah. I don't want anybody to make that weird correlation. But no, I, I like it's really nice, and especially as guys. Like the compliment well is very dry. You know, you might get a drip. Every few weeks, especially like other like guys. And again, another part of this is like straight guys to other straight guys, to your friends or to fucking strangers should feel more open about giving compliments like this. And a lot of people don't. And a lot of people feel weird seeing it. Yeah. I mean, like we've told stories about, you know, our, our friend group who are very, very sort of affectionate physically and, you know supportive in terms of verbally emotionally yeah yeah it's like and and people get fucking real weird about that real fast and these Mm -hmm. are people also like there are people who like we don't really know but then there are also people who are like we need more men who did you know like post all this shit on facebook and instagram but the second they actually encounter it like the amount of times again i'm pretty sure we talked about this when i hang up the phone with pretty much you or any of our other guy friends i say love you you know what i mean like love you bye it's not just me no it's not just you sorry buddy (laughs) whatever we say it all the time i'm joking i'm joking but like people get fucking real weird about that it's it's something and this isn't really sex and dating and related but it is super related to toxic masculinity well i I think like it is part of the reason why men are not as good as they could be because it's like they're cut off from areas of like you know validation and support and blah blah blah, and they, they look to women for all of that yeah. Which is why they come on like a fucking freight train. And it's like, maybe if your edges were rounded out a little bit by the fact that being able to talk to your friends about your problems and your, you know, whatever, and having your friends be able to like love you and you love them in a way that doesn't make you feel like you're, you know, sacrificing your fucking masculinity. Like maybe they wouldn't then hang every single thing on a woman and then expect the world from them, you know? And that's the thing. I think it's like, you're putting so much importance on women and it's so unfair because you should be able to get that from other parts of your life. Yeah. And I would say that like the things that you quote unquote need should be the, from your platonic relationships. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I think that support and validation and compliments and all that stuff should be sort of like your friend's responsibility when, when it's genuine to do that. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I'd love telling people that they look great or i love telling people that like something they're doing is working and i love it when i can say that genuinely and i rarely Mm -hmm. say things that are genuine you know what i mean like i don't like saying like if i know someone is having a rough day and haven't really put a whole lot of effort into their appearance i hate being like you look great today because it's so fucking fake thing is often the only reason you do that is to help them and it's like if they know that's not true it does the opposite right yeah because then you're being condescended to right or like pander and just like you feel kind of belittled. But like the amount of times I have complimented someone and like their reaction, nine times out of 10, whenever I say like, oh, you look great today. Women or like my coworkers are usually like, I showered. <laughs> like That's <laughs> their explanation. Um, and like, that's fine. But like, and like I say it, hopefully, like hoping to brighten their day or like increase their spirits. And I do the same thing for like dudes as well. Mm-hmm. Back when I used to, back when, again, when the world existed, I would be at coffee shops and stuff like, and if I saw someone who was just fucking rocking it in a line or whatever, I would sometimes be like, I'd like, I'm, I love that shirt. Or mm-hmm. there were times where I, I heard people have a, uh, 
Fantasy Costco, which is from the Adventure Zone ringtone in uh, when I was traveling in New Orleans and like hell yeah. Had, had a huge fucking like conversation about it. And like hopefully that conversation would be like, you're fucking awesome. I like it's so cool to meet you. Hopefully that made them feel you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it stuck with me, so hopefully it stuck with them. It's funny because like I like doing that again, as you say, like in a genuine way, but I feel so much more confident doing it to guys because I don't want to feel like I'm putting a woman in a bad position. You know what I mean? So I will definitely say it to guys more. You know what I mean? Like in work, like someone came in with a sick, like blue silk dragon shirt, which is funny because most people wearing that would look like a fucking dumbass. And this person just <laughs> looked great. And yeah. I was like, damn, like I would love, hey, I would love that shirt. And I could go buy one. But if I put it on, I would look so bizarre. And yeah. this person just rocked it. And I'm like, hell yeah, I love the shirt. And they were chill, you know, but it's like other people come in. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to say something in case you think I'm being weird. But anyway. I think, hell yeah, accept the compliments if they're nice and if they're well-meaning. But like, again, on the whole catcall thing, it's like if just because you're complimenting someone from your point of view doesn't mean it is a compliment or that someone should take it well. It's a, an indication that like men typically only compliment women when they're attracted to them. Yes. So it's like the vis-a-vis sort of like, you know, transposing it and being like, this guy's complimenting me, so he's got to be into me. It's like- yeah. No, let's like let's take a step away from that and just realize that as human beings, we can be nice to each other without mm-hmm. wanting it, without any ulterior motives. Yeah. Um, this comes from um, Reddit user Help Me F's, and then a bunch of numbers. I, a male twenty year old, told her, a female twenty one year old, I didn't want to join their family vacation since I didn't, I don't know them. Now she's mad. I started seeing this girl not long ago. I think we met like. Barely two months ago, it's first time ever I've really considered someone something more serious, and I could definitely see myself with this girl. Today we met, and I could see she was extremely excited about something. I asked her what's up. Then she asked me if I'd like to go with her and her family for vacation in about three weeks' time. Keep in mind, I've never met them. I tell her it sounds really fun and all, but I don't know how I feel about traveling with them, as I don't know them. More precise, I say I usually want to know someone or some people really well before I go on a trip like this. She then says something like, I mean, you know me, to which point I say, I also barely know her. So since I said that, she barely talks to me and says I'm a jerk. I don't know. I feel like I've done nothing wrong. Just expressed my feelings and been honest. Damn, this is a good question. Yeah. Because like, (laughs) okay, going, okay, going to see someone's family that early at all is pretty big. Yeah. And it's pretty awkward. It's pretty tough. Going on a trip with someone's family ever is pretty big. Yeah. And it's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Um, So, okay, let's just say this guy, I'm going to say it right now, he's totally in the right. However, this poor girl, God bless her heart, probably asked her family, oh, can I bring this guy? And was really excited. And hey, fair fucks to the family. They were like, yeah, bring him. And that's a really nice situation Mm -hmm. out of context. And for her to have asked, because there's no way she didn't ask before she asked him, and then to ask him and then have that rejected is like a really embarrassing and really tough situation, even though I think she definitely jumped the gun by doing it. But it also shows that she really likes the guy if she wants him to do this. But like now for her, she has to go back to her family and do all the shit, which I get. I know it sucks. So it's like, it's spicy because I get it on both sides of the whole thing. It's like, I think he's entirely in the right, but I see where she's coming from and it's, it's sweet in its own way. And it's tough now too. Fuck. I think where he misstepped was the, I barely barely know. know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was his big misstep. I think if he had handled that part of the conversation better, I think he would be okay. Hopefully most people realize that meeting parents is a big deal, especially as a dude. Because there are certain expectations of you and there is a certain scrutiny of you that I don't know that ladies get. And and correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I'm not a lady, so I've never really experienced it. But I feel like most people are just happy that their sons are with someone nice. I have gotten like some really weird shit off girlfriend's dads. Like real, like almost like pseudo aggressive or not even pseudo, sorry actually aggressive but like pseudo threatening behavior and like weird challenges and like almost like abuse you know what i mean like 
where it's like you have to like grin and bear it and eventually they're like oh he's all right and it's like that's not really cool whereas yeah. like and again i can only really speak for my family or like what i've heard other people go through it's like sometimes girls have issues like or at least again the situations i know of it's like sometimes the mom can be a little bit weird at the start but i've never heard the same kind of like you know testing mentality where it's like you know the dad's like hey go do this thing that's a manly chore and if you can't i'll abuse you and while you do it i'll critique you and if you do it we'll see you yeah. know i mean like almost every one of save for my you know uh, amanda's parents um on on both sides because you know they're separated and mm -hmm. have you know their own respective partners um like amanda's dad nor her stepdad have ever and this is the big thing that pretty much all of the other dads have done were be like oh you do this you make money on that and it's usually like you know either podcasting or you know <laughs> filmmaking or whatever <laughs> Spoiler warning, we don't. <laughs> um, but it, it was always like there's always sort of the expectation of like that weird sort of like 15th century being like, how are you going to pro like provide for my daughter? As if like we aren't both desperately working to pay rent. Mm -hmm. and, and it's and it's kind of like I don't think. And again, I've only ever had the experience of, of a dude meeting women's parents and women meeting my parents who, like I said before, I could bring well, any, your parents are the loveliest. Humans that's the thing is, I, I could bring literally anyone home, and they would be the nicest to them. So, so I, I have a bit of a bias on that end. But I don't think it's unreasonable for, like, even if like Amanda's uh, was like, oh, do you? I think we're supposed to go to a timeshare or something. And I was like, that's a long time to spend with your parents. And again, I love her parents. They're mm -hmm. incredible. They're they're so cool. They're they're my people, right? Like I, I get along really, really well with them. But this like there is still sort of and I've been with her for I think five or six years now. And there mm -hmm. is still sort of that like whew, that that much time with your parents, huh? Yeah, and because the thing is it's like just because you're like they are close and you're close to them, it's it doesn't like complete the triangle. It doesn't mean you're automatically close to them, which is what I love about what's her name in this situation saying oh you know me it's like yeah cool but like and, and i'm sure he didn't mean i don't know you i'm sure what he meant was like yeah we're still new enough but yeah. even then it's like i could know someone real fucking well and then meet their parents and be like wow these are nothing like you like th it, there's no equivalence there or still feel uncomfortable you know yeah. what i mean it's like that's I the thing it's like yeah i, I know you i know you very well because we fuck i'm not gonna fuck your parents like there's no line between me knowing you and me being okay with them, right? A lot of people are cool in spite of their parents. You know what I mean? A lot of people are cool because of their parents. And no matter which way it goes, they're still not the same fucking people. And you still don't have a relationship with them. And you also don't, like, don't know the situation of what the vacation is. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess you could. But like, imagine being in a shared hotel room with your yeah. girlfriend's parent. Like, Oh, hey, I've done that. Not great. That sounds like fucking actual like hell. Like horny. And like, we're just in bed and like, I don't even want to move because what if me moving in bed sounds like I'm doing something? It's like, damn. So I think the important thing, like the way I would have handled this would have been like, I would really like to prefer to meet your parents first in a more relaxed setting in which we're not together, you know, 24 seven mm -hmm. or for a prolonged period of time. It's like, you know, we're, we're a new couple. I feel like this might be a little too soon. I really mm -hmm. appreciate the offer. It's very sweet and it's super fucking cool of your parents to be cool with this. Um, but like, let me take them out for dinner. Like when you guys get back from vacation, let me take you guys out for dinner and let, like, let's actually meet them prior to going on a big trip like this, because I'm the same way with just people. You know what I mean? Like there are people who I'm, if they were like, Hey, let's go on like a one week vacation. I'd be like, Ugh, can I handle you for a full week? Well, that's the thing. Also, like people you travel with, like it, it's so different to to hanging out with, like being with someone like 24 seven and like mm -hmm. having to deal with like not having every luxury and, and honestly space, you know, at your fingertips. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Even like good friends sometimes cannot travel together. Yeah. So to then travel with complete strangers in this very bizarre power dynamic, he should have been, you know, like, hey, this is really cool that you asked. Really cool that they said yes. And like, obviously I would love to go, but like, I don't really want to be in a position 
we're like, you know, I, I don't know them. And I think it'd be better to get to know them first. And maybe later on we can do this. But, you know, I hope you have a really good holiday. And like, obviously, I would love to travel with you. But I just don't feel like the time is right kind of deal. Absolutely. All right. You ready for some tenders? Let's do some tenders. At the end of the episode, we like to peruse online dating and take a look at some people's profiles and point out some red flags, what works, what doesn't work, in an effort to make your online dating experience more enjoyable. All right, so uh, take a look at Rita. Here because my husband says he doesn't care about me anymore. And I actually moved here because of him, so I have no friends. Clown emoji. We are breaking up. I'm looking for zero drama people with happy little calm lives. I love the ocean. Invite me to the beach. Offer me a job. Not here for sex. I also want to have a baby next year and form a lovely little family. 100% Mexican. Lived in Canada for seven years. I hmm. I don't know if you understand how babies are made. But you, <laughs> you do need to have sex for that. So I don't know if you're just throwing that out there as a fun tidbit. I mean, I guess technically you don't need to have sex to have a baby. Um, but I, this is a very strange, like if you're going like end your relationship, don't get on <laughs> Tinder and just sort of like live in this state of limbo. Like the whole thing is a red flag of me being like, I don't want to deal with any of this. Cause that's the thing. It's like, if you have broken up with your husband, cut the fact that he says he doesn't care about you anymore. Cut the fact that you moved here because of him and have no friends. Cut the cloud face emoji. Cut the we are breaking up because that is a shit ton of baggage to just, you know, launch into someone's face the second they look at your like thing. Maybe quit the offer me a nice job because what are you looking for here? Maybe yeah. quit, quit the baby thing. Maybe quit the like if we got rid of everything that was like problematic, we would have. I'm looking for zero drama people with happy little calm lives. I love the ocean. Invite me to the beach. And like, that's a bad profile. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not the worst that we've seen, but no, it's not a good one. It's probably six times better than it currently is, but still not great. Oh, and then I guess hundred percent Mexican lived in Canada for seven years. Uh, I'm going to give it a zero. Yeah. I, I don't like any of it. So I will give it a zero as well. Cause it's so much trauma and baggage and bullshit. And then is also like, like let's have a kid next year. What? I feel like no relationship should have a kid next year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry, but she could just be saying that independently of dating because you can have a child without true. Right. But, but even again, then, the fact it's that you're a... saying it, even if you want to adopt the fact that you're saying it here, when you're looking for a partner implies that you're looking for someone to be part of that, which is still a little soon after a year. Yes. So that that's a zero for me as well. This is Rochelle. Just one fuck boy away from joining Christian Mingle. Adventurous, positive, outgoing, and independent. Work and in school. Let's have a fun summer. Some of your best stand-up recommendations. Amateur baker and chef, dog and cat mom, and avid puzzle doer. Send me a, and it looks like an octopus emoji, for a would you rather question. You know what? I was all right with it at the start, and it just got better from there. I'm going to give it like an 8 out of 10. I, and- I really don't get the send me a question, or like a... An octopus for a would you rather question? Hey, maybe it's just like, give me an octopus and I'll give you this. I <laughs> and, and the thing is, I like that they've included an opener. I like that they've included some shit about themselves. The like one fuck by away from Christian Mingle. It's funny. Yeah, it's it's not bitter enough t- for me to like mm-hmm. leave a bad it, taste in my mouth. I was ready to be bit or like to be weird about it. But like, it actually seems pretty innocent. And like, they give enough about themselves. They seem fun. Like, I like it. And it's you know what, Dane? It's refreshing to have a good Tinder on here. That's why I brought it. Are you ready for... Their name is cut off in what I was sent, so... Okay, so let me guess. You like dogs more than humans. You love traveling and adventure. Sarcasm is your second language. Wine and Netflix are mainstays. You're always looking for the best pizza. You hate writing anything in your bio. You super liked me by accident. Insert Instagram and Venmo here. Swipe right if you're not basic. I mean, it's a bad profile, but like... They ain't wrong. <laughs> they ain't wrong. But at the same time, <laughs> that's what we do. We we mock them. You have yeah. to actually give something, right? Yeah. Like, we don't have to end every segment by being like, so I'm Nile. I like to swim. I love blue cheese. You know, we don't have to do that. Do you actually like blue cheese? I fucking love blue cheese, man. Uh, that's fair. You ever had Gorgonzola? Uh, I don't know. 
Because anyone I know who doesn't like blue cheese, who's tried gorgonzola, has really liked it. Because usually, like, in bars and shit, especially in Toronto, it's like, when they're like, oh, blue cheese, it's just like this generic, shitty blue cheese. That it's just like kinda... the blue cheese dressing. Yeah, or yeah. even just like, yeah, it's garbage. Anyway, continue. Yeah, it's again, like, it's tough because everything they're saying is correct and mm-hmm. like problems with other profiles but that doesn't make your profile good all you've done is point out red flags of other profiles by and then also inadvertently throwing a red flag on yours by like the funny thing is they have this list of like you know basic shit but like the the next thing on the list is just doing this oh let me guess you're bitter about things that regularly pop up it's like yeah that that's what you're doing dude it's like a two yeah not like there's humor, it. but there's absolutely nothing. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where like again, you're not wrong, but at the same time, oh, what about you? Tell me something about you. I need to know something. Otherwise, you're just being like, these are all the things I dis. It's like okay, great, <laughs> sure, we can all point those out, but it's like I'm swiping no to all those people, and you've given me nothing on top of it. Yeah, to be so, so judgmental. And then also not show why you are in any way better. It's just wild. Yeah. You got one? I do. This is Jason. Okay. I spend too much time on pickup lines. Interests include pasta, murder mysteries, contemplative sci-fi, hikes, psychology, neuroscience, good bad puns, gin, socks, spicy food, poetry. Spend more time deciding what to watch than watching the thing, seeing my favorite bands live, and talking to any dog I find. Looking to meet fellow writers and creatives all around the world. Nerd face, handshake nerd face. You read that list really quick, but I don't think I could ever date someone who actively likes socks. Yeah. That seems strange to me. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Does this man not have a personality and has to pretend he has one? And like, he just was like, "Uh, socks do normal. It sounds like an alien trying to be a human. Do humans like socks? I will say, and this might change your opinion. He's a very stylish man. He's I have in, no doubt about that, but I also feel like that's too overbearing. I think, I mean, like, his sock game is pretty on point. He has pictures of his socks? Well, it's a lot of full body pictures. And, like, I, and I will also say there are pictures of him barefoot or, like, in sandals without socks. So socks don't seem to be his whole thing. I don't know. It kind of kind of wigged me out. Because I feel <laughs> like it's it's just a strange thing to be super into. But also... I like when people are super into strange things, but I just also feel that like socks has no, there's no like scope to that. It's like, I like socks. Damn, we can't do anything with that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not enough for me to be upset about. No, I I give this also an eight. Yeah. I'm going to say the same thing. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight because I feel like I could have a real good conversation with this dude. Obviously wouldn't date him because I'm straight, but like there's nothing, there's, there's nothing there that like, initially like gives me any i don't think there's any red flags like no 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 the the thing is is a funny joke i came up with but um yeah no and also i do love that there's a list of shit that they like because they sound like a real human with interests and it's also specific stuff yes yeah he's not saying like i like food he's saying spicy food great yeah he likes gin cool you know what i mean contemplative sci-fi great i like he's narrowing things down and i think Mm -hmm. that's That's enough to sort of like really zero in and have a conversation Mm -hmm. as opposed to like if someone's just like, I like drinking with my friends. I like clothes and food. Yeah, I like feeling happy. And when the weather is good and I don't like traffic and being stabbed in the face. So, yeah, Yeah. all of us are like that. Yeah, no, I think that's actually a really good point is like be specific. Show who you are. Don't be fucking vague because no one can work with that. I have two left. One is an, a real life poster found on a light post in Leslieville. And one is a Tinder profile. I have no idea what the first thing you said is. A poster found on a light post in uh, Leslieville. Okay. Great. Okay. I I understand. That now. <laughs> uh, which would you like first? Uh, give me the Leslieville. Okay. Uh, so this is, again, found in Toronto. Single woman. 51 years old, divorced, loves to work out, traveling, good wine, full-time job with benefits, loves cooking, walks, looking for single fit man aged 18 to 25, non- non-smoker, social drinker, no head games or lies, call me, and their number is right there. 
Damn, I was gonna say I have the perfect person because there's someone in Parkdale who's like uh, uh, in is or it around twenty. I think so, in and around the same age, looking for like a lovely young or a lovely woman to go for walks and shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, great, this is perfect. Let's hook this man up. But then she's just like, nah, I want them young. The that- most she will go is less than half her age. Yeah, it's like she wants that fresh, fresh meat. She doesn't want that old stuff. No, nope. she's not like retired. She wants lean, young tender meat Mm -hmm. are we writing this why not well you know what fuck it i'm gonna give this a i'm gonna give it a seven because at the end of the day she knows what she wants she doesn't seem to be particularly toxic that's the thing it's like you know she does lay out what she wants and she lays out who she is you know doesn't quite have the same specificity of the gentleman we just dealt with but like you get the vibes I wouldn't call her because I don't have a picture of her. Unless there is a picture. There is no picture. It See, is also I, written with like permanent marker on a blank piece of paper. Yes, which I'm sure was photocopied at a fucking like 7-Eleven. Uh, here's the thing. I think she would find, you know, unless there's, you know, some physical things happening that. No, even then, I think she would be able to corner a market on online dating. Whether she got on fucking Cougar Life, if that's still a thing, mm-hmm. or OkCupid, or Tinder, or Hinge, or whatever, I think she would find plenty of people who are into her. Because you remember fucking, I don't remember his name, but the male model who was like, looking for an older woman. Oh yeah, um, Mil- hashtag MILF's rule. Hashtag, hashtag MILF's rule. You had trouble with that sentence. Shut up. <laughs> Guys, you've done it. Your white claws have gotten to him. Um, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I don't recommend posting your number for all and sundry to, you know, take. So maybe for this person, my only red flag is that you just stuck an A4 piece of paper on the pole. Maybe, maybe look at online dating. And finally, we have Margot. Getting lost in the supermarket as a child was scarring. My mama would call out my name and everyone would call out Polo, drowning out my pleas for help. <laughs> 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 uh, that's fantastic that's an instant like for me that might actually be a super like for me oh, yeah that's a 10 right there yeah that's perfect all right guys it's been an absolute pleasure we love you maybe next week you can poison Dame with white claws again I'll, I'll post up some other random shit and we'll just bully him via the medium of instagram yeah i'm not crazy about the cyberbullying that happened this week but i'm also not super against it because white claws guys i don't want to fucking say it but it's it's a hot boy summer, and I think white white claws are going to be uh, a mainstay in my drinks that I consume places to enjoy alcohol. That you consume places to enjoy what? Thank that you very much for makes... listening. <laughs> we super appreciate you guys uh, spending your time with us. We know, uh, you know, with the world opening up again, everyone's time is diminished. We're all working again. We're all doing things again. And it means the world to us that you've chosen to spend an hour of your time hanging out with us. Uh, we love you. And thank you very much. 100%. Every, every time I see or hear or there's any interaction, it just fucking warms my heart. You guys are the best. And honestly, I, I know everyone always says we have the best fucking fans. Like you guys are the best people. Every interaction we've had with you guys is absolutely golden. It's been a long fucking time and that hasn't changed. So props to you guys for just being the best people. And I like that we've amassed a little crew of great people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so nice to foster a community. Uh, And like, unfortunately you guys don't seem to need our advice. (laughs) <laughs> at least not at, at least not the extreme advice that we tend to give, but we're always here for you. So if you do need uh, a question answered or if you do have a quandary that you need solved, uh, please head over to fbuddiespodcast.com. You can find our contact form. You can set your own agent name to keep you completely anonymous, and we will address your question as soon as we can and hopefully set you on the right pack path to uh, a sexy and happy and healthy relationship or future. And thank you, Josh Eagle and the Harvest Cities for their songs, Paper Stars. You got some bad sex writing for me? Uh, Yeah, this is a a, a little brief one from uh, Stephen Markley. And uh, this is about a, a bartender, so you know how it is. Yep. Have to do better than that. She had a sharp nose that had looked prettier in her teenage days. Large breasts threatened to bust from the U-cut black shirt she wore, the cleavage vibrating in a gelatinous way as she poured whiskey and snagged the hose that dispensed soda. That's, nope, nope. That's not how it works. It is, though. I thought you were going to say she was, like, going to be shaking a cocktail, which... Nope. 
I even get it. Then, even then, it would be like vibrating in the gelatinous way. It would be like over the top, like red curtain bullshit. Yeah. But like just holding the hose, yeah, pouring a whiskey, like pouring whiskey, and then pressing a button on a fucking soda gun. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. That does nothing. That's why my abs are just so defined right now. It's because like it's like those vibrating machines. I fucking you know? wish. Do you know how many <laughs> fucking cocktails I shake on a nightly basis? I mm-hmm. wish that got me fucking ripped. <laughs> but do you wobble gelatinously? I'm not ripped, so yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. My name is Dave Miller. And I'm Miles Spain. And we've been your fuck buddies. 